Once upon a time, there was an amazing game engine that went by the name of Stingray to take the video game development industry by storm and join video game engines such as Unity and Unreal. However, even though it was used in many successful games, such as the highly acclaimed Helldiver series, Fortune led the game engine into a path that was not expected, and it found itself in the graveyard of discontinued software. So what is the story behind the Stingray engine, how did it reach this point, and what is the role of Autodesk in all of this, and how one game studio brought it back to life from the dead recently, probably to take one last ride. Before the point in time when the engine gained the name of Stingray, let's go back to an era when it was known as BitSquid, a game engine that was developed by a company of the same name, BitSquid AB, which was established in the city of Stockholm, Sweden in 2009 by two brilliant minds that were former employees of the game studio Grin and by the owners of the game developer Fatshark. The two founders in question are Tobias Parson and Niklas Freikol, two engineers who originally met in Umia, another Swedish city back in 1998, when Tobias was still a high school student while Niklas was studying physics. But little did they know that years later, Tobias would land a job at the renowned game development studio Grin, and in a pleasant surprise, he decided to bring Niklas on board as well and together they led the engine team there for years. However, the entrepreneurial spirit within the team started to kick in to jump into a new chapter by deciding to start their own company. When Grin went bankrupt, following its launch, the engine found some success in the industry, such as when it was used in Escape That Island or in some Warhammer video games. But what happened after that? But before we jump into the upcoming chapters of our story, let's first explore how Stingray made a name for itself. To begin with, during its era, Stingray was designed to be a game engine that was capable of even conquering the most visually demanding games, at least by the standards of its time. How did it achieve this, you might ask? Well, it does so by providing a series of features that can help developers achieve the exact look and atmosphere they have in mind such as physically based materials, a high performance reflection system, as well as an advanced particle system, post process visual effects, and light map baking, among many other stuff. On top of that, one of the most impressive features of the engine is what is known as flow nodes. If you have already tested the waters with the blueprint of an Unreal Engine, we can say it works using the same principle. So basically, instead of designing the game mechanics manually with tedious lines of code, we can instead take advantage of the flow node system by combining a set of blocks that we call nodes with each other. It is actually visual programming in a sense, and it allows users to create complex games just without any programming knowledge. Well, however, you will still need to figure out how the flow nodes work, but it is nowhere near as complex as learning a whole programming language. And speaking of that, the good news is that the main programming language of the engine is Lua, which is generally accepted as one of the easiest languages to learn, mainly intended for both speed and extensibility. Please keep in mind that there are loads of other features that the engine offers, but this is the general gist of it. Before we continue, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, Odyssey Draft. Odyssey Draft is a narrative design tool for any and all interactive and narrative-driven content. From dialogue to multifaceted compelling choices, in addition to storylines, characters, question lines, locations, and everything else in between. It can be a perfect tool for managing narrative content in a visual way with seamless integration into Unity and Unreal Engine. Odyssey Draft offers a free version, which is a standalone version that you can use forever. It is fully featured and comes with 700 free objects for each project, which is more than enough to dip your toes and start your journey. So if you find this interesting and you want to learn more about this great tool or maybe you are planning for your next project, you can check RTC Draft right now from the link down below. Now back to the video. 
In the world of tech, being a promising software often comes at a cost, as they typically draw the attention of industry titans, as it is the case with BitSquid, which was no exception to the rule. In fact, it even caught the attention of none other than Autodesk, a leader in the field which is notorious for acquiring emerging software, for reasons that we will discover later. But the long story short, in 2014, they acquired BitSquid, and made use of its core technology to develop a new game engine that goes by the name of Stingray. Stingray was first launched at GDC Europe in 2015 and was built on the powerful data-driven architecture of BitSquid. However, not much was changed about it other than a few improvements such as the use of a different user interface and being more tightly integrated with the rest of Autodesk design tools to simplify the game development process. And when it comes to the plans behind this release, Autodesk Senior Vice President of Media and Entertainment said, between augmented reality, virtual reality, and the rapid growth of mobile platforms, the games industry is undergoing a major transition, which poses new complexities for both AAA and indie game developers. Autodesk develops Stingray with these challenges in mind, and we are excited to share its debut with the game development community. Throughout the years, the software received a collection of updates such as the introduction of a physically based light system in addition to new scattering tools. However, while it was expected for the software to take on the industry for years to come, let's just say it didn't go as planned. On the 7th of January 2018, the Stingray community had to witness the sunset of their beloved software, which had been shining for years, settling down once and for all because Autodesk, loyal to their tradition of acquiring tools only to discontinue them a few years later, announced that they would no longer develop or sell Stingray as part of their lineup of products. And as heartbreaking as this news was at the time, the actual reason behind this sudden shutdown was rather a realistic one, as it could be seen through the official statement of Autodesk. They explained that their customers were increasingly favoring other titans, which are Unity and Unreal, for both game development as well as VR and AR, and it felt to them like a lost cause, which is kind of understandable. Because to provide you with a little historical context, in 2018, Unreal Engine was quickly gaining industry adoption for both AAA and indie games, with over 5 million developers installing it into their machines. Meanwhile, Unity was a dominant force and the engine of choice for over 45% of the world's developers. From an Autodesk point of view, the two engines had built two powerful ecosystems of resources and content that simply cannot be rivaled, leading them to believe that it was better for business to collaborate more closely with Unity and Unreal rather than trying to be a competitor. However, with news like this, it was only natural for the user base to feel frustrated by it with some fans blaming Autodesk for how they should have tried to make it more popular by offering a free-to-download model like some of its competitors for example, which I think is fair, instead of following their usual subscription model, while some others accepted the unavoidable fate of not being able to dethrone the two kings of the market, which are Unreal and Unity. But it didn't matter at that point, because the current question now is, was this truly the end of the engine? Or is there still some hope? The story of Stingray, I think, will be remembered as a project with great but unfulfilled potential, as an engine that failed to take off. Besides, even though it was used in many commercial games such as Warhammer End of Times and the Helldiver series, it never managed to reach the aspiration that people bet on it. But is this really the end? Well, interestingly enough, there was a glimpse of hope. Because many people don't know that the recently released game, Helldivers 2, was actually built on Stingray, as it was confirmed in a tweet by Arrowhead CEO, Joanne Palstad, who mentioned that work on Helldivers 2 began before Autodesk discontinued the engine, and that their engineers had no choice but to handle everything themselves without the updates and support from Autodesk. However, does that mean that the engine can be revived? Unfortunately, it appears to be dead for now, because the potential solution 
for resurrecting Stingray is if Autodesk makes it open source, or if they sell it to another company, for example. But currently, there is no evidence supporting these claims. And at present, it seems like Stingray is a very discontinued product, with no hope of revival, which is an unfortunate end for an engine that had some unique features and a lot of potential. But who knows? We can never tell what happens in the future, but it is certainly the end for now. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.